I know everybody says the same thing, but I'm not sure which one is down. So I'm gonna I'm gonna test it out here. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, James. Um, before I jump in, this is kind of my transition slide, but I want everybody to take a look at the map here. We have some local data about where encampments actually are in our community. These are the encampments that our outreach teams have gone out to find and have reported back across Harris County. And this gives a, a pretty uh, realistic sense of the scope of what we're even talking about. And it, you can tell it goes really like to the edges of Harris County. This is a really large area. And I really, I said thanks to James already, but I have to say it again because I joined the coalition just in January and everything was already done. We were in the news. We had a national best practice. So we were leading the country on closing encampments and we had a temporary navigation center. So we had a place for all these folks that we were working with to go. Uh, my job was kind of just to don't screw it up. <laughs> and it wasn't really a surprise that we had done all these things because the strategy in Houston for the city and for our homeless response system, since I arrived in Houston, back in Houston, uh, you know, six years ago, working at Search, it's been, let's get folks off the streets into housing. Housing informs everything that we do. Uh, but yet in the last few months that I've been here, I keep getting the same question about how do we have an effective response to encampments? And, and the, the equation is actually pretty simple. The effective answer is the same as a compassionate answer. And that was a plug I got from Mike, Mark Eichenbaum. So thank you, Mark. It, but it's true that housing people permanently is, is a, a compassionate response, but it's also the response that works. And the way that we know that in, in encampments is that if we're not putting people into housing, what happens? Well, if people are having to leave an encampment, they're just gonna be displaced. And I can't really think of a less effective response strategy than one where people just move around and go somewhere else and don't actually get their needs met and cycle through these systems that we've been talking about today. So to give a sense about um, some of the impact that we've had, I, I just wanted to show you guys how we define encampments real fast. This comes straight from the national best practice. We have large, small, and hotspot encampments. And when we're talking about our results, um, that's kind of how we categorize them. So I'm gonna just go, quickly go through the encampments that we've decommissioned. I'm not gonna read it off, just you guys can just take a look, but you might recognize some of these streets. These are places in our community where all of us live. And what you may have noticed in the last several months, or the last actually over a year now, is that the encampments in these areas have disappeared. And if you've noticed an encampment near you that's disappeared, it's probably here on this list because it's probably part of this project that we're really seeing change our community. To bring it down to earth so that we can kind of get a sense of what this means for the people that we're working with, I wanted to talk about the encampment we decommissioned last week. The Spur in Midtown is an encampment that I did outreach at years ago when I started doing outreach here in Houston with Search. And it had actually some of the same people living there that I knew when I started over six years ago. The incredible thing when you go into an encampment is you really have to consider what the community culture is. You think about different neighborhoods. Some neighborhoods have an HOA and everybody votes and likes each other and gets along, I think. And then some are the exact opposite. And in this, this, this encampment had a community that was really based around supporting each other. We saw 100% of the folks from this encampment actually moved together to go to the temporary navigation center to get housing. And one of the unique features of this group was that there were actually three folks living there for a very long time who were hearing impaired. And so this group needed to stay together because they found their purpose in their, the support that they offered each other. And I don't think that this group would have been able to pursue housing any other way. And I say that because I tried, you know, six years ago at search. <laughs> the, the cool thing about all this is that it's actually happening all over the map. 
The green sections on the map here are the areas that we decommissioned already. And so those are the areas, again, that like, we all live in. And so you may wonder, what, um, you know, what does this mean for me when I drive by? The tents are gone. Other people may show up. We know that. Uh, but we have partnerships with law enforcement where they understand what we've done. And they're on board with connecting folks to services to keep that work going. And I know I'm out of time, but I have just, I would be uh, remorseful if I didn't acknowledge all our partners, our nonprofit partners, our service providers, our team that's here today, they make this work. Our public partners, the city, the county, the state, we're coordinating with folks every day to scale up and make this possible. And we've got it down to a, a well-oiled machine where every week we're getting updates about new encampments, about housing inventory, we're meeting with all our public and nonprofit providers to find out what can we get done this week. And we're to the point where we can decommission multiple camps at a time. So the hope is in the future that we continue to build capacity. We continue to expand this work, hear the voices from the people on the front lines, the partners doing the work, and that we, uh, I'm out of time, sorry guys. <laughs> that that we, we, keep, we keep it going. Thank you.